GitHub took down lovable.dev today, and I want to talk about it, because at the end of the day, we are in a situation where that kind of thing is going to get much, much worse in 2025. I'll explain the competing exponential growth curves that we're on here and how this all broke down. So overnight in the US, lovable.dev suddenly was unable to continue to create GitHub repos, and this quickly snowballed into a major outage because at the end of the day, their exponential growth has been so fast, lovable.devs has, that they were creating GitHub repos at the rate of one every two seconds. Absolutely insane speed. And they said that's, that they had previously checked before the holidays with GitHub and said, look, we're growing. We are growing really fast. We're depending on GitHub to be up. Are you good? Are we going to hit quotas or rate limits? And GitHub had told them no. Well, no one is quite saying what happened. I've dug in, GitHub won't say, Lovable's being polite about it. All that is actually occurring is that there's a terms of service violation that Lovable ran into sometime during the night hours on January 2nd in the US. GitHub was all asleep and it's the holidays. So like you're really waking up a developer who's somewhere skiing at this point. And <laughs> no one was on call really and certainly they weren't responsive because lovable was hard down for hours overnight a major client of theirs hard down for hours they said they tried and tried and tried to wake up lovable and got nobody they tried to build a workaround on amazon s3 during the night to keep people up because it's they're a european startup it's like the first working day of the year in europe and people are like coming in with their new year's resolutions and they want to build stuff and it's hard down. So they're desperately scrambling to get stuff over to S3, building a workaround. And it's like, you can read on X the different sort of updates that come through. And it's always like more bad news coming through until they finally got GitHub to wake up this morning and GitHub took them back out of jail and allowed them to start creating repositories again. Now. Reading between the lines, I strongly suspect that one of the takeaways for Lovable on this is they can't be that dependent on GitHub. And so they probably will eventually move to Amazon S3 as a way to start to scale this, which is not exactly ideal because one of the things that's really nice about GitHub is everyone knows what it is. Everyone goes over to GitHub and knows what you've done. And there's just- I'm curious to see what Lovable, this is my first time even being introduced to the idea to apps in seconds ah. whoa describe what you want to build get a first version in seconds iterate and improve with chat click to deploy and share what the fuck? what the fuck? why would you even want to be on a github repo see what have been shipped Okay, let's see, LLM analytics. Let's see the prompt. What is lovable AI though? That means I like, I get it's a software. Is it like a builder? Hold on, let me see. A superhuman full stack engineer that works. Yeah, it's a full stack engineer. Wow. Just not a good substitute for that social quality that GitHub brings to code. And so it's sort of sad to see a situation where you have an AI tool trying to build on top of GitHub, trying to reinforce the GitHub flywheel, and GitHub just isn't set up for the volume. And this is something that I want to call out because I think there's two exponential curves that are happening in 2025 that are stacking each other, and they are going to make life even worse for providers like GitHub. If you are in the infra business that has anything to do with uh, dev building at all, brace yourself, do an architectural refactor now. And the reason why is because over the last 20 years, your entire business model has been engineers committing code at the speed that humans can write code. Not anymore. Now in 2024, You've had like a massive 10x explosion oh, in the number of people who are interested it. in coding because they can code with LLMs. And so there's a bunch of AI driven get... code being committed to repositories like GitHub. 
And that's about to get even worse because now stack on top of that sort of massive explosion in humans using AI to code, now agents will be using AI to code because we're gonna have autonomous agents coding within the next couple of months here. So now like 10X the 10X, and you're gonna get even more code being committed. Thank you, Nate. He said autonomous. Thank you. That's all that's all I want. That's all I want to do. reinforce that it is an autonomous act. It ain't no superhuman built from GPT. It is an actual operational autonomous thing that's gonna be done to replace repetition of maybe what a human would do. Look, I am not saying that this is all high quality code. We're not talking about that here. We're just saying that from a sheer volume perspective, if you are in tech, you should be doing a refactor now. You should be looking at your architecture and looking at the ways people use your systems and ask yourself, if these people suddenly get access to AI tooling that enables them to be much more productive, how will their usage of my system change? How will it change? Let me give you an example that's not even GitHub. Let's just say you're running a nice little SaaS business for marketers. Let's say your marketer suddenly gets a hold of Project Mariner. It gets a hold of a browser. Bad example. I ain't even going to listen to it because, one, people, not everyone knows marketing. Make it, make it something that everyone knows. Let's say you're going to a doctor. All right. We're going to use the doctor example. I'm going to bring it back so I can get the question again, but we're going to use doctor. Remember that. Let's say it's not even GitHub. Let's just say you're running a nice little SaaS business. Let me give you an example system change. How will it change? How will users you interact with your product when AI is integrated? So let's say you're going to a doctor. Uh, year one, there was no AI. So you walk into that motherfucker and you got to sign every paper in the goddamn book. It's your first time there. You know how it go. First time people always have to sign everything. They sign in their life away. You there for 20 minutes signing papers. You wait for 45 minutes for a doctor to come because, you know, paperwork might be slow and people in front of you and all that nitty pitty stuff that makes time slow at the hospital. Year two, them motherfuckers is like, it's too long. It's wait time too long. Niggas keep cussing me out when they get into my office. We need an AI. They get an AI to automate that process of when you coming in for the first time. Now everything is on the motherfucking phone. You could talk to a chatbot. You could communicate with a chatbot with any questions you have. You're not even talking with a motherfucking human, bro. All the, the strenuous, tedious tasks that you're going through right now have been implemented in this autonomous agent, so you don't got to deal with it. A human nigga don't got to deal with it until after you're done as well. Now, you're getting booming business. I mean, the implementation works. Now niggas don't have to sit in the, in the fucking waiting room for so long. You're getting booming business. Everybody want to get a truck up now. Nigga, grandma's is getting up like, yo, I got to go get checked up. This shit going through like... Now your system go down because there's too much patience. Nigga, a motherfucker is like, yo, bro, how is this AI going to integrate with that much influx in business? Because when you exponentially make things better for people, you know, it's going to cause a reverse effect where you may not be able to grow. It actually hurts you in the long run. So if we don't get a grasp of what AI tools we need, or at least a system of what AI gear or equipment, then we're going to be blowing through more money using AI than actually helping people, which is like a crazy thing to think about. GitHub literally shut down because a major AI builder is just handling too much computation power at the same time. Ain't that some shit?